Two years ago, everyone was telling you to learn to code. Today, not so much. And in this video, I'm going to tell you what happened and why this could actually be a good thing. So in the early 2000s, if you wanted to get rich, the proven path was to go to a fancy university and get a law or a finance degree and work wearing a suit as a lawyer or an investment banker. In the 2010s, this was replaced by just learn to code, bro. With the rise of big social media companies like Google, Facebook and Amazon, the demand for programming skills far outpaced the amount of people that actually had these skills. But recently, this is for the first time no longer the case. Companies have been laying off people en masse and this has resulted in a lot of people to simply give up learning to code because when you have all of these experienced engineers that have been fired from these companies competing for the same job as you are, what is the point anyway? But what no one seems to be saying is that this was always going to happen and the fact that this is happening is actually a good thing for you in a certain way. So today we will talk about why this crash of learning to code bro was always going to happen and why the tech industry is specifically prone to these kinds of crashes and why it will probably happen again and finally how you can actually benefit from this situation. But first we need to understand why the nature of coding and the tech industry specifically made it inevitable that something like this was going to happen. So in the early 2000s, we had the what we call dot-com bubble, where essentially you had a lot of internet companies. Everyone was investing into any company with dot-com in their name because they thought internet is the future and any company that works with the internet must be a great company to invest in. And this led to over-hiring in all of these companies when in reality, many of the companies were not real profitable companies and they were never going to be profitable companies because their products simply sucked, which eventually led to the collapse of the dot-com industry when all these zombie companies had to disappear. And the next wave of this was the social media wave. In the 2010s, we had all the Facebooks, the Googles, the Instagrams popping up, riding the new wave of social media. And a lot of these companies were sort of leftovers from the early dot-com bubble as these were the only companies that were actually legitimate good companies so they started growing extremely extremely quickly and essentially they started competing with each other for very limited talent for their coding jobs that they now required to outpace their competition. So there was a lot of hype with these social media and more broadly tech companies who thought that growth was simply limitless and they could simply keep hiring as many programmers as possible because they were always going to have a need for them, right? Because they were always going to keep building new things. And again, obviously, eventually this growth had to stop. I mean, there are only so many people in the world that Facebook can get as their users or that Google can get to buy their ads. So they cannot grow limitlessly. And what this leads to is that they simply have to start firing a lot of the people that they've hired in this growth phase. Because the particular nature of the tech industry is that you need a lot more programmers to build something new than you do to maintain an existing product. Let me just explain this concretely. And this is what makes the tech industry kind of different to other industries. If you imagine a lawyer, let's say you're a corporate lawyer dealing with mergers and acquisitions, there's always going to be more mergers and acquisitions. If you are a divorce lawyer, there's always going to be more divorces. Now, of course, there's going to be like fluctuations and things like this, but the work is more like repeatable and reoccurring for jobs like a lawyer or a banker or something like that. Whereas for a programmer, if you think about this in the context of just building a coding project on your own, like 90% of your work in any coding project goes into actually building the project. And once the project is built, even if you release it, you have users for it, it will take work to maintain it, but it will take a lot less less work to maintain it than it ever to build it. And when you take the same concept and you zoom out to the level of an entire company or an entire industry, when the entire industry is focused on growing, building new products, there's new companies coming out as there's more and more companies jumping on the next trend, for example, the social media trend or the internet trend in the early 2000s. There's going to be a lot of demand for programmers in this growth stage. But now imagine what happens when all of these companies broadly stop trying to build new products and they instead shift to simply maintaining the products that they've already built. Well, suddenly you have a lot less 
need for programming because fixing bugs and maintaining features simply takes a lot less work. So that is why as a whole, when the tech industry discovers some new trend or technology, there is going to be a big boom in hiring as every company essentially starts to compete to be the first one to fully maximize this new trend. But when this trend goes away or when it is fully maximized, like in the case of social media, it pretty much is now. There's only so many new people that these companies can get to use their products. There is going to be a correction to essentially get rid of all this talent that is now no longer needed. And this is an oversimplification. There's like economic reasons as well for exactly why this crash happens. There's new regulations that have come out that have made it more difficult to hire people. But this is the broad idea. But now I will tell you why this is actually a good thing. So broadly, in the growth phases of the coding industry, the demand was far outpacing the supply of the amount of people who actually had the skills that these companies needed. That is why we were in the situations where even people who just learned to code over like a couple of months could command very high salaries because anyone with any programming skills was better than nothing for these companies because they simply wanted to cobble up every single person with any coding skills to work for them in, so that they wouldn't go to their competitors. That is how fierce the competition was. But over time, there's more and more resources that came about online as people discovered that learning to code is this golden ticket to get rich. So there's more and more boot camps that came about, more and more online courses. People started realizing that maybe I don't need a computer science degree to learn to code anymore. And companies started realizing this as well. So it became easier and easier to learn to code. And there were more and more people now choosing to learn to code when they saw the monetary opportunity that learning this skill provided them which now increase the supply to essentially match the demand or even outpace the demand for programmers in the world. So a catastrophic situation happened, obviously, when the demand suddenly decreases a lot, but the supply still exists. So now you have a lot of supply. So a lot of people wanting coding jobs, but there just aren't as many coding jobs anymore because of this shifted focus in the tech industry. And when this happens, what happens over time in the industry and what has broadly happened in the learn to code industry is that people are simply not as excited about learning to code anymore. People quit learning to code these boot camps go out of business. Like my online course as well, like I can tell you, it doesn't make as much money as it once did. Of course, that sucks for me, but for you, if you're still out there learning the code and you still actually wanna become a programmer, it is actually a good thing. Why is that a good thing? Because let's look at the demand and supply again. When demand is here, supply is up here. The reason why it's difficult for you is because you have all this supply competing for all of these jobs. But when the supply decreases, when learning the code becomes no longer cool, becomes no longer the thing that everyone's trying to do, the supply sort of overcorrects down to eventually match the demand again. And if you actually stick with it, you actually still want to learn the code because you actually want to learn the code because you actually find this field interesting, you actually want to work as a software engineer. Over time, even though it hurts in the short run, it is a good thing for you because that means that over time, the competition will sort of select itself out of the pool of people competing for these jobs. So in the long run, which is sort of happening, but hasn't quite happened yet, it will get easier for you as people start to see coding as more of a normal industry where sure it pays well, but obviously it's difficult to get in precisely because it pays well. So there's less and less hype. And in the past two years, there's been so much less hype in terms of learning the code than there was in the couple of years before that. And over time, this is going to be beneficial for you because it will reduce the competition and again, and eventually make it easier to get in. And also, eventually, the demand will increase again. Eventually, the number of jobs will start increasing. And in fact, we've already seen this very slowly. The number of jobs have started to tick up again. They're up like 30% from the lowest point or something like that. Obviously, nowhere near where they once was. But over time, they will start to tick up as the economy improves, as it gets easier to raise funding and things like this. And we could, in fact, see a new rise in the industry one day if one thing happens. And that is if the industry finds some new technology, some new trend where essentially now new companies start to pop up again to take advantage of this new technology or this new trend. So we could very well see that the demand eventually rapidly rises again. So if you're still one of these people who has been learning the code, who has been honing your skills, you will then be at an excellent position to capitalize on this one when you are now essentially again in the position where you are one of the few programmers who has the skills that these companies need. Now I cover in more detail sort of the history of 
why the tech industry rose, why it went down, and why I think we could see a new rise in the near future in this video right here. So if you're interested in a more detailed analysis on this, go watch that video right there. I'll see you in the next one.